Uh, hey everyone, um, today I kind of want to keep things light. We've got an exam coming up. I think this lecture is going to is going to be Friday's lecture, which means we got an exam one week from today. So I kind of want to slow things down. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself in terms of the the material for the exam. <clears throat> So, and I do think I mentioned, um, I sent out an email a few days ago saying definitions will be part of the um, exam. That's absolutely true. And I guess I should, you know, on, in this lecture just tell you what I want to cover. What I would like to cover um, in terms of the exam is, and I don't even remember all the chapter numbers, um, but it's going to be up through the material on Lagrange's theorem. So that's chapter, uh, let me just check here to make sure, that's chapter 10. Okay, so that'll, we'll start with the group theory material, intro to group theory, cyclic groups, permutation groups, um, and uh, uh, Lagrange's theorem. Those are the things that we want to cover. So, <clears throat> um, all right, what was I saying now? Oh yeah, so today I just want to keep things light. I'm going to do a couple of examples. And so to, to apply these examples, um, I need, we need a couple of results. And so the first one, um, so in uh, Zn, the order of the element k is equal to, so this is really a result from, uh, this is theorem uh, 6.7, and it goes like this. So in Zn, the order of k is n over the GCD of k and n. So this is theorem um, 6.7b. <clears throat> All right, that tells us how to compute the order of an element in a cyclic group. Now, by the way, I should point out that I stated the theorem a little bit more generally. I said that in a cyclic group of order n, g to the k has order equal to this. <clears throat> so if we work in Zn then, right, with generator 1, then 1 to the k, right, remember now we're thinking additively, is the number k. So the order of k is equal to n over gcd of k and n, and so that's the one result that what I want to use. And then also we need our result from yesterday, that was theorem 11.1, eh, I guess. Uh, yeah, theorem 11.1, that um, in, in a finite group, right, the order of the element gh is equal to the least common multiple of the order of g and the order of h. <clears throat> right, so we're going to need these two facts um, for the examples that I do today. So, um, example one goes like this. Um, so, how many elements of order, uh, we're going to do order five, does Z5 cross Z? 25 half, All right? So we want to count the number of order 5 elements inside Z5 cross Z25. Um, okay, so for our solution, first let's just think about the two groups individually. So we got Z5 and we got Z25. So uh, the possible orders in Z5, remember, the order of an element has to divide the order of the group. And so the possible orders in Z5 are 1 or 5. All right, so possible orders in Z5 are 1 and 5. And then possible orders in Z25 are going to be the divisors of 25. That's going to be a 1, 5, <clears throat> uh, and 25. So, and, and, and then what do we do? Well, we put these two facts together with this fact right here. And so if we want elements of order 5 in Z5 cross Z25, then what we need to do is mix and match from these two two sets here to get elements of order 5. <clears throat> so, um, so let's say it like this. If uh, a comma b is in um, z5 cross z25, where the order is equal to 5, um, so where 
the order of a, b is equal to 5, then one of the following has to happen. Right, so then one of the following is true. Um, so we'll break this into cases. So the first case, um, let's do the situation where the order of A equals 1, in which case the order of B has to equal 5. Right, so that's one possibility where we get... Oops, five. <coughs> where the least common multiple of the individual orders um, is, is equal to 5. Uh, the next possibility, we could have the, the flip side. So that would be order of A <coughs> equals 5, and the order of B equals 1. And then the last possibility is that both order of A and more order of B are equal to 5. Right? So if you look amongst these numbers right here, those are the possibilities that give you uh, least common multiple equal to 5. So we'll consider and count within each of these cases separately, and then add the results together, or add the numbers together, to get our final result. Just want to get that thing out of the way. Okay, so let's look at case 1. <clears throat> um, so let's see, Z5, how many elements of order 1 does Z5 have? Well, it has 1, just the identity, right? The number 0. <clears throat> right? So Z5 has one element of order 1. And then, let's see, now we need to figure out who, uh, you know, who are the elements of order 5 within Z25. And so I'm going to use this result right here um, <clears throat> so in Z25, right, the order of B is equal to, let's see, so what does it say? The order of B is equal to 25 over GCD. Um, so 25 over GCD of um, uh, B and 25. And now, if we have b equal to 5, that means, so then what do we need? We need g, c, d of b and 25 to equal, so let's see if I solve that, that needs to equal 5. So who are the possible numbers b that satisfy g, c, d of b and 25 equal to 5? Um, and so who are our possibilities? Well, b could be equal to 5. B could be 10, B could be 15, or B could be 20. <clears throat> and so what that means is in our first case, there are four elements. And so who would they be? They would be 0, 5, 0, 10, 0, 15, and 0, 20. <clears throat> okay, so now let's move on. Uh, I don't know what I want to save here. I guess I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll save the stuff on the left. Okay, so now I'm working on case two. So case two, now we're going to have um, uh, 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 A have order five and B have order one. So... Z5 has four elements of order 5. Who are they? 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? When this number is prime, everybody is a generator except the identity. All right, so 1, 2, 3, and 4 all have order 5. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> Z25 has one element of order uh, one, namely zero. All right, so this gives us four more elements. That will be uh, one comma zero, two comma zero, three comma zero, and four comma zero. 
right? So, and I, I, I wish I would have labeled it like I did before, right? So, but we get four here. So there's four in this case. And then there were four in that case right there. And now we move on to our last case. And that's when both of them have order five. And then we just basically mix and match, right? Um, so there's four elements of order um, uh, five in Z5, in Z5. Four elements of order five in Z25, and any combination, taking one from here and one from here, gives us another element of order five in Z5 cross Z25. You can write them all down if you want, but just think about mixing and matching. There are 16 possibilities, all right? So, so case three gives us 16 more. And so final answer then, 16 plus four plus four. So, uh, you know, the answer here, <coughs> So, um, final answer. Um, Z5 cross Z25 has um, uh, 24 elements of order 5. All right, so that's kind of fun. Um, it's just applying the two facts that we have for counting elements within cyclic groups and then products of cyclic groups. Okay, for our next example, it's going to be kind of in the same vein as our previous example. Um, not quite the same, but, but a similar flavor. So this example that I want to look at, um, how many cyclic subgroups of order 10 does Z25 uh, cross Z100 have? Um, okay, so in, in this is the way in which this problem is similar to the previous one. A cyclic subgroup has to have a generator, right? So if we want a cyclic subgroup of order 10, then we would first need to know who are the elements of order 10 sitting inside Z25 cross Z100. Each one of those elements generates a cyclic subgroup of order 10. <clears throat> so that's our first step then. So we'll say solution. Um, uh, the possible orders, so possible orders um, in Z25, we, we saw that already, that's 1, 5, and 25, and then possible orders in Z100, so that's going to be the divisors of 100, which are um, 1, 2, uh, 5, 10, 20, 50, and, um, oh, 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 whoops, I missed 25. Uh, 25, 50, and 100. I think I got them all. One, two, three. Something's, something's weird here. 20 times 5. Oh, uh, 20 What? Yes, yes. Four. The, I missed four. Sorry. <laughs> One, two, four, five, ten, twenty. Did I get them all? Oh, let's check my notes here. One, two, four, five, ten, twenty, twenty-five, fifty, one hundred. Yeah. Okay. So those are the divisors of one hundred. <clears throat> okay. So now um, elements of uh, uh, order. I should say it like this. Uh, let's say it better. Uh, a comma B in Z25 cross Z100 
has um, order 10 if uh, one of the following is true. Okay, so let's consider the, the, the mixing and matching the possibilities that will give us order 10 in um, Z25 cross Z100 based on the individual orders. Um, and so the first one we'll do um, if the order of A <coughs> equals 1 and the order of B equals 10. Yeah, that one works. <coughs> uh, next possibility, um, what else could we do? We could do an order 5 and an order 2. <coughs> um, so is that the order I want to do? Yeah, so order of A equals 5 and order of B equals 2. And then the last case, oh shoot, let me do these in the order that I wrote them in. I have order A, 5, oh, and I want, sorry, I want to do order B equals 10, and then the last one will be order of A equals 5, and the order of B equals 2. All right, so these are the combinations that give us a least common multiple equal <clears throat> to 10. Okay, so now let's count... Yeah. Okay, so for case one, of course we know that A needs to be equal to zero. Who does B have to be? Well, <clears throat> if the order of B equals 10, let me think now, let's think a little bit more advanced maybe. Um, in Z100, because 10 is a divisor of 100, there is exactly one cyclic subgroup of order 10. Right, so um, Z, well, so, so uh, clearly A equals zero. And now in Z100, there is a unique <clears throat> cyclic subgroup of order 10. Namely, <clears throat> the subgroup generated by 10. Um, and any cyclic subgroup of order 10, so let's say every, cyclic subgroup of order 10 has uh, four distinct generators. So I'm doing things a little bit differently than I did in the last problem, right? We're in Z100 now, and I don't really want to have to go through and say, okay, who's got order 10? Who's got order 10? Who's got order 10? Instead, we want to think, oh, if we are in Z100, there's exactly one cyclic subgroup of order 10. That cyclic subgroup has four different generators, and each of those elements has to have order 10 because it's the generator of a cyclic subgroup of order 10. Um, right, so and in, in fact, let's write a little summary then. We have the elements that come from category 1 are going to be 0, comma B, where B is one of these four generators. That means that we get four elements here. Okay, second one. Um, in Z25, we already identified. So Z25 has what was it? Four elements of order? Yeah, four elements of order five. So Z25 has four <coughs> elements of order uh, five. That's from our last from the last example. And uh, Z100 has uh, four elements of order 10. That comes from our previous, um, previous case right here. So mixing and matching these, what we're going to get is 16 elements. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, now we have to look at our last case. <clears throat> Um, so third case, uh, we again, once again, so we have uh, four elements of order hmm, uh, five in Z25. How about in Z100, elements of order two? <coughs> Well, there's exactly one element of order two. Um, so there is exactly one element of order two, namely the number 50, right? So of order uh, two in Z25. So if we mix and match here, what we get is four elements. So all together now, and we're not done, right? We we're not answering the question yet, but what we have is 4 plus 16 plus 4, which means that we've got 24 elements of order 10 in Z25 cross Z100. So um, we'll say it like this. So Z25 cross Z100 has 24 elements of order 10. Okay, but now, remember the question says, how many cyclic subgroups of order 10 are there? And the answer is definitely not 24. And the reason comes right back to this fact right here. Every cyclic subgroup of order 10 has four distinct generators. So, our sets of generators come in pairs of four. And so each four tuple, right, each collection of four, are going to generate the same subgroup. So let's say it this way. Since each um, cyclic subgroup of order 10 has four distinct generators, uh, Z25 cross Z100 has 24 divided by 4 which equals six <clears throat> uh, cyclic subgroups. Of order 10, right? There are, for each of the cyclic subgroups in there, there are four generators that generate exactly the same subgroup, right? So break our, our, our group of 24, or our set of 24 um, elements of order 10 into piles of four, Right, each one of those piles corresponding to a different cyclic subgroup of order 10. All right, so in the end, 24 divided by 4 equals 6. That's the number of cyclic subgroups of order 10. All right, so that's kind of fun. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm going to stop here, um, take a look at these examples, and um, um, I don't know, internalize them, right? And, and you'll get some homework problems and probably you know, ex final exam problems that are, that are similar to this. Okay, see ya.